Coffee or tea with Susan B. Susan B. Who? Susan B. Anthony. Travel across America with me. She was arrested in the front parlor of her home after voting in the 1872 presidential election. Do you know who the candidates were in the 1872 presidential election? Well, I'll tell you at the end of this video. We're in Rochester, New York, and we're going to be visiting several Susan B. Anthony sites. One, the Susan B. Anthony House. And this great coffee shop. What does this have to do with Susan B. Anthony? Well, it has to do with women. I want to introduce you to Tanisha and Tammy. We will also be going to Susan B. Anthony's grave in the famous Mount Hope Cemetery in Rochester. Did you know that there are more people buried in this cemetery than live in Rochester, New York? Isn't that crazy? There are more dead people in Rochester than living people? That's a bit of trivia for you. The Susan B. Anthony House is a National Historic Landmark. She resided here until her death. It's located at 17 Madison Street in Rochester. The museum is next door at 19 Madison Street in another lovely home. We stopped off and went through the visitor center and saw lots of memorabilia and information about Susan B. Anthony, this famous woman who brought voting rights to women. The House hosts an annual celebration of the 19th Amendment to the United States Constitution, which gave women the right to vote. Thank you, Susan B. Susan B. Anthony was born in Adams, Massachusetts, and her family moved on a packet boat along the Erie Canal to a farm near Rochester in 1845. She moved to the home here on Madison with her mother and her sister in 1866. And then she became very active. She was arrested in this house for voting in the 1872 election. She stood trial in Canandaigua and was found guilty and refused to pay the fine. Inside the museum, hanging on the wall, they have a digitized copy of the indictment and the judgment. The judgment is a summary of her arrest, arraignment, motion for trial in the U.S. Circuit Court, the trial, the verdict, and the sentencing. She was tried in Canandaigua, New York, found guilty and sentenced to pay a fine of $100 and court cost. The other document is the indictment and judgment. On November 5th, 1872, Susan B. Anthony and 14 neighborhood women voted in the national election. On Monday, November 18, 1872, the Deputy United States Marshal E.J. Keeney served a warrant for the arrest of Susan B. for voting illegally. The indictment is a criminal complaint against Susan B. Anthony by the U.S. Attorney Richard Crowley, recording the indictment by the grand jury. So interesting. Out on the porch, they had this old voting machine. How many of you have voted using a machine exactly like this? I have many times. When you talk about Rochester and you talk about Susan B. Anthony, well, you can't miss talking about Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass is a major character in American history in that time frame. And he and Susan B. were great friends. And they had this sticker quoting Frederick Douglass, it is easier to build strong children than repair broken men. Fabulous statement, wouldn't you agree? Susan B. Anthony, organize, agitate, educate, must be our war cry. And then her buddy Frederick Douglass said, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. Susan B. Anthony stood side by side with Frederick Douglass and others fighting our battles and espousing the cause of enslaved people. She was quite the activist, an important person in that time frame. After going through the museum, the lady at the front desk recommended that we go to the park to see the statues of friends Susan and Frederick having tea. It's located at Madison and Madison. The Madison Square West Main Street Historic District has been listed on the National Register of Historic Places since 1988. This square, dedicated in 1971 to Susan B. Anthony, originally was named Mechanic Park, then Madison Park or Madison Square. In 1904, the Olmsted brothers redesigned the landscaping and walkway enjoyed here. Frederick Law Olmsted, he is a famous landscape architect from the Boston, Massachusetts area. Here you find Susan B. and her friend Frederick talking over the issues of the day. Over a pot of tea. With what historical figure would you like to sit down and have a cup of tea? Tell me in the comments below. Speaking of tea and coffee, when we were traveling between sites in Rochester, we stopped at the Coffee Connection. It says Project Empower. That was on the front part of the building? Well, we didn't know there was a front part of the building. We just saw this little doorway and this little building. It said Coffee Connection. We thought, oh, isn't that cute? And when we walked in the back door, we found a man. He was working on a fan and we saw a coffee roaster. We had obviously gone in the back door. He said, go on in, just be careful. And we went and yes, we saw the front of the building. That's where we met Tanisha and Tammy. If you go there, tell them Dana from Unclassic Road Trip sent you. 
These gals were great. They told us about this coffee shop and what it's all about. They do have Susan B. Anthony pens and this coffee bag for sale. They do sell their own coffee and it's all a part of their project Empower. This is their mission. We provide comprehensive, continuous support for women in recovery from addiction, trauma, and incarceration, empowering them through sustainable jobs and transformative life practices. The women in the program run the coffee shops, cafes, and wholesale business. There are two locations. We went to the one at 681 South Avenue. Great coffee, by the way. It's all organic and fresh roasted right there. Tanisha took us back to where we went in the back door and showed us their roaster. Here are the beans before roasting and after roasting. So cool. I really can't tell you how great this coffee was. But moving on to Mount Hope Cemetery. Remember, there are more people buried there than are alive in Rochester. I just can't get over that part. This cemetery is huge and it's gorgeous and very historical. And several famous people are buried there, particularly the two famous people that we've been talking about today, Susan B. Anthony and Frederick Douglass. This property is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. The cemetery has two primary entrances and is located at Mount Hope Avenue and Elmwood Avenue. There are gorgeous structures at the entrance of each one. One thing that I liked about the cemetery is they had it very clearly marked where the famous people's graves were such as Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass, 1818 to 1895, escaped slave, abolitionist, suffragist, journalist, and statesman, founder of the civil rights movement in America. And they have the path clearly marked, where he is buried alongside his family, wife, and daughters. Have you subscribed yet? If not, please subscribe. And if you have, thank you. And then we went to Susan B. Anthony's grave. It's off Maple Avenue in Mount Hope Cemetery. It too is clearly marked. On the path up to her gravesite, I found these stones. Aren't they interesting? Kind of different. There were beautiful flowers and American flags at her and her sister's gravestones. All on the posts for the chains around their graves are I Vote stickers. That was a great idea. If you ever go visit the Susan B. Anthony grave and you have an I Voted sticker, take it with you. Save it and put it on there. I'm sure she would appreciate it. Flip flops on the ground. Unclassic road trip. Oh yeah, I haven't told you who the presidential candidates were. The candidates in the 1872 presidential election were Ulysses S. Grant vying for his second term and Horace Greeley. Horace Greeley died and Ulysses S. Grant was re-elected. Leave a comment below and please subscribe. Coffee or tea with Susan B.